Hello everyone, in the prior session, we discussed internal control over cash disbursements. We emphasized the point that all cash disbursements, all cash leaving the company, should be made in the form of a check and we explain why. Now in the real world, these days, most disbursements are made electronically. The same internal control would apply. In this session, we are going to deviate from that check disbursement. We are going to disperse money using actual cash. And this is what brings us to this topic called petty cash. First, let me start with an analogy explaining what petty cash is. So this way, it's a very simple concept, but first I want you to understand it. Think of petty cash as an emergency fund, but it's a small emergency fund, or I would say more, not an emergency fund, as a small change jar. Just, just like how you might keep a small amount of money at home for quick unexpected purchases like grabbing a coffee or paying for parking, Petty cash seems, serves the same purpose, but for a company. Now, why cash and not check? Because for small disbursements, we, want, we don't want to go through the whole check approving procedures. And that's why we use actual cash. It's a small reserve of cash on hand, actual cash used for minor expenses. And those expenses, they will come up throughout the day, like office supplies, we ran out of papers, we need an ink for the printer, and we don't want to go through the whole check procedures or electronic payment that would be impractical or inefficient because we need this quick. So the idea behind petty cash is convenience, but generally speaking, the amounts are very small. Now in the real world, most companies these days, they don't even use actual cash. They might use a prepaid card. So the cash already on the prepaid card. However, just like you would want to keep track of your home emergency fund to make sure nothing goes missing or gets misused, a business must have controls in place to monitor and replenish its petty cash. And this is what we will discuss, controls over the petty cash fund. Now bear in mind, Petty cash is designed for small expenses. So generally speaking, it does not lead to big accounting problems. Nevertheless, fraud, abuse, theft, misappropriation could occur in this fund. And in some companies, I know a company that had extra money in their petty cash, but that's beside the point. Let's go ahead and start to work the petty cash section. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let's start by defining the petty cash system. It, it's a way for a company to manage small payments for minor expenses, such as shipping fees, minor repairs, low cost supply, maybe sometime you want to buy pizza for your employees that are working overtime or during lunchtime because you know, they're busy. So you don't want to go through the whole voucher system to process a payment. What you do is you have this money set aside for those type of emergencies. Now, although we're talking about petty cash, which is actual cash in hand, you have to remember these days, most companies, they would use a debit card, which is a prepaid a debit card used like a check or use like cash, but you don't have to actual cash or you would use a credit card with certain limit because the petty cash system, you have a limited amount of money. You cannot spend, you know, maybe two, three, four, five hundred dollars depending on the size of the company, but the amount that's available on these cards is limited. Now, how do we, how do we set up a petty cash fund? Well, first the company will have to estimate how much will they need? It could be $400, it could be $1,000, it could be only $50, depending on their need and depending 
on the size of the company. The company estimate the total amount of small payments it expect to make over a short period, a week or a month. Then the company cashiers draw a check for an amount slightly higher. So if they say we're gonna need $80, most likely they were overestimate because prices go up and they would say, okay, we're gonna go ahead and issue you a check for $100. Now this check is cashed and the cash is giving to an employee called the petty cashier. So simply put, the company will issue a check for $100. The cashier, well, will give it to an employee. The employee will do what? Will cash the check and they will bring back the $100. And this individual is called the petty cashier or the petty cash custodian. The person in charge, that's the person in charge of this cash. Now, how do they manage this cash? Well, First, they have to secure the cash. Make sure the cash is kept in a secure petty cash box, usually a safe box. And when the small payments are needed, the petty cashier makes these payments from the petty cash fund, but they expect in return receipts. That they only give you the money if you give them a receipt. A receipt means what? A proof for the payment, and it has to be a business payment. Then eventually what we do, we record the payment. Each payment made from the petty cash fund is recorded on a petty cash receipt, also known as a petty cash ticket. We have to record everything. The person receiving the, receiving the cash signs the receipt, which is then placed in the petty cash box with the remaining cash. So at any time you open that save box, the total amount of funds should equal to the receipts plus the cash. So if we add up all the receipts, plus the cash, it should equal to the petty cash fund. That could be, you know, as I said, 200, 500, whatever the amount is. So if the money is not there, so the money is not there, there's a receipt why it's not there. For example, if the fund is $200, it could have 170 in cash and $30 in receipt or $10 in cash and $100 in legitimate business receipts. Because at any point in time, cash plus the receipts should equal to $200. Now, once we use up this money, once we use up the cash, we need to replenish. Replenish means go back and refill the cash coffers because we need the cash. Once we use it up, there's nothing we can do with the receipts. So what's going to happen is this. When the fund is running low or at the end of the accounting period, again, could be monthly for these type of accounts, the petty cashier sorts the receipts by expense, then total them. Then they submit the receipts. The petty cash gives all paid receipts to the company cashier. The company cashier stamps the receipts as paid to prevent reuse and files them for record keeping. Because once you give them the receipt, well, that that we paid for that bill. It stamps as receipt. Then we reimburse. The company cashier gives the petty cashier a new check to replenish the funds. So if we submit $100, and $90 in receipt, we're gonna get back $190 and we have $10 in cash, we go back to 200. So this is how the account, account is replenished. We go back and restore it to the original amount. Now let's take a look at an example. Let's assume Greenleaf establishes a petty cash fund for $500 on July 1st. On July 31st, by the end of the month, the fund shows $140 in cash with receipts of office supplies 100, travel expenses of 200, and some miscellaneous expense of 50. Now, July 1st, we have to establish the petty cash fund. That's the first thing we have to do because we started this cash fund. What is the entry to establish the fund? Well, we are going to debit petty cash fund, which is an asset, but this 500 is actual cash. And we credit cash because we took the money. So one cash account is reduced. Another cash account is increased. Asset when asset goes down, asset goes up. Rather than having the money in the bank, we have the money at the business place. This entry will reflect the establishment of a petty cash fund by transferring $500 from the bank account into the petty cash fund, which is the actual cash. Now, at the end of July, what's going to happen? The petty cash fund need to be replenished. It's at the end of the month. 
then we have to compute the total amount that we spent and figure out any discrepancies. The expenditure were 100 for supplies, 200 for travel expense, 50 for miscellaneous expense. We add them up and our expenses total 350 and there's a receipt for everything. We counted the cash and the cash remaining on hand is $140. So let's add them up. 140 plus 350 is 490. Hold on a second. I said at any point in time, receipts plus cash should equal to the original amount. Well, guess what? There's a $10 missing, shortage of $10. What could happen? I really don't know. Maybe this miscellaneous expense, uh, we gave someone the wrong change, uh, $10 went missing. There's a shortage. It does not matter. At this point, we need to replenish the fund and bring it back to how much? The 500 we have $140 in cash. How much do we need? We need 360 to bring it back to $500. So we send the receipts and they will give us 360. And this is the journal entry that takes place. We debit office supplies 100, travel expense 200, miscellaneous expense 50. Then we debit this account cash over and short. And we looked at this account in the prior recording, which is because it's a debit, it's an expense. Basically, we lost $10, went missing. Now, we have to investigate this. Managers will have to figure out usually who's responsible, the petty cashier. The petty cashier is the person that you will ask, why do we have $10 missing? What we're supposed to have cash is $150, then everything would have been good. You would not need this $10, and they will need to give us $350 if there was no shortage. But we happen to have a shortage. Sometimes we could have overage. As I told you in the past, I worked at some place and they have plenty of cash overage. It was a government unit, believe it or not. Okay, so, so that's the entry to replenish the fund. So notice we did not touch the petty cash. The petty cash account is only changed when we increase it or decrease it. For, for example here, let's assume August 1st, at the beginning of August, the company decided to increase the petty cash fund from 500 to 600. What do we do? We debit petty cash 100, we credit cash 100. So what we did is, remember the petty cash, is, is this is called an Im impressed account. It means it stays the same. It was 500, now we want it to be 600, so we add $100 to it. Now, receipts and cash at any point in time should equal to 600. Now also we could have the company could have decided to reduce the petty cash fund from 500 to um, I don't know to 450. If that's the case then we will then we will what we'll do is we will credit and we give them back $40. So we would have uh, credited we would have credited let me go back to if they decided to reduce the fund, we would have, have credited the petty cash. So this would this would have been cred, credit, petty cash, credit 50, and we would have debited cash 50. Basically, we gave back $50, and that $50 was deposited at the bank account. This is 50, not 40, 50. We credited this account 50, assuming we decide to reduce the petty cash fund. What should you do now? To learn more about this topic, you want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, additional lectures that's going to help you, whether you are an accounting student, a CPA candidate, CMA candidate, invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.